What's going on my friend? Eric Ellis Jr. here with ericellisjr.com and can you not wrap your head around how to do Facebook advertisement? Let alone how to find a decent tutorial online to actually get results within your business? In this video, I'm actually going to give you actionable steps on how you can become a Facebook ads beginner to a Facebook ads expert in one freaking video. Cue the intro. No wasting time, let's dive straight in. So from beginner to expert in just watching this video, the Facebook advertisement. So we're gonna go ahead and dive deep into this freaking um, platform. Now first and foremost, how do we even get access to Facebook ads? Now the first thing that you wanna know is that you need a Facebook fan page. So first off, create a page and make sure whatever type of ad you're gonna be running is congruent with uh, uh, the page that you're gonna create. Meaning if you're gonna be talking about fitness or you're promoting fitness products, make sure your page is related to fitness. Now the next step would be creating the ads. You simply go to creating the ads. Now what I would highly recommend is going to business.facebook.com and literally creating a Facebook business account so that way you can create Facebook ads as a business owner. Um, now there's three important things to understand when it comes to Facebook advertisement. Number one is that it starts with the campaign. Number two is that you're gonna pick ad sets for that specific campaign. And then number three is within your different ad sets, you're gonna have different ads. So we're gonna break down each one step by step, but first what I'll do is give you an overview of what each one is. Now what is the campaign objective? A campaign objective is simply put what your ending goal is. Whatever you're trying to accomplish as a Facebook advertiser. Um, ad sets. Ad sets are simply, it, I mean, it's self-explanatory. It says audience, so your targeted audience, who you're trying to get your advertisement in front of. Placements, where you're trying to display your advertisement. And we'll get into that um, a little bit more in detail in the future. And then budget and schedule, meaning how long you're trying to actually run your ad and how much you're trying to spend per day on your advertisement. Step number three is your actual ad. The format, right? What type of ad you're gonna create. The media, the type of content, the additional creative, that's just simply the extra things that you can actually include within your advertisement. Now, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna break down each one, because like I said, from beginner to expert, I'm not just gonna do a how to create a Facebook ad. I'm gonna actually break down what everything means so it's gonna be a little bit more in detail in comparison to some of my other past videos. So, what is brand awareness? Brand awareness is simply when you're trying to make people aware of your brand. One thing that I'd like to explain is that these are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, ask yourself the question before you actually do your advertisement, what is my ending goal for my Facebook ad. What am I trying to accomplish? You want to reverse engineer your Facebook ads by starting from the ending point with the ending goal in mind. Because if you start and then you don't know where you're going, right? If you basically start a car and start driving and you don't know where your ending destination is, you're gonna freaking find yourself in no man's land, right? So we're gonna start, example, I'm trying to get more clicks on my website to generate more sales for my e-commerce website. Just to give you an example. Now me personally, what I do is I do sales funnels and I do lead generation for my sales funnels. But let's explain what this is, right? So brand awareness, I'm trying to make people aware of my brand. So all they're simply gonna do, and one thing that I want, uh, uh, to tell you is common mistakes people do is they pick the wrong upfront they they pick the wrong uh, campaign objective right so brand awareness that's to get people aware of your brand right if you want traffic to your website 
that's specifically what you want. You're not going to pick brand awareness, right? So brand awareness is more so for bigger companies who have a larger ad spend. There's no point in really doing brand awareness if you're doing something like $5 per day. Because who really are you going to make people aware of your brand where you're spending $5? Now, when you're somebody like Coca-Cola or Pepsi or some of these bigger commercial brands, right, that's when you might do brand awareness. So with that being said, if you're not a commercial company, if you're a smaller business or a self-employed individual or somebody who's trying to do your side hustle or side business with Facebook, you're not going to pick brand awareness, right? Reach is simply you're paying for reach. You're paying for Facebook to display or maximize the amount of people that see your actual advertisement. So an example, if you're trying to have people see a picture, if you're trying to have people see a video, if you're trying to reach just more people with a specific type of ad, then you're gonna do reach. And next is, so that's awareness, right? Keyword awareness, you're trying to make people aware. So brand awareness and reach, self-explanatory. Consideration, right? So you want people to consider this specific action. Now with traffic is basically another word for traffic is cost per click marketing. You might have heard of that CPC marketing or CPC advertisement in today's world in Facebook is called traffic. So with that being said, you're gonna get website clicks, you're gonna get uh, sales funnel clicks, whatever it is, whatever you're paying for, whatever objective you pick, Facebook is going to optimize the advertisement to get you those specific results. So traffic is simply to get more visitors to what, wherever you want to drive them to. You could drive traffic to a, a Facebook post. You could drive traffic to a website. You can drive traffic to a e-commerce store, to an affiliate offer, to a sales funnel, to, I mean, anything, guys. You just, you, you name it, right? Getting clicks. Um, next is engagement. So again, Facebook will optimize depending on what you're trying to accomplish. So if you're trying to accomplish engagement, meaning you want more likes on a post, you want more um, comments on a post, right? You want people to engage with your content, then you will pick engagement. Self-explanatory. Now, I don't have to go into detail on app installs. If you want app installs, you simply do app installs. If you have a new app or startup app, Right, you can optimize Facebook to get people to actually install your actual app. And you're only gonna pay for that. So with that being said, let's just say I had a startup app and the long-term value of a customer or an app install for me is literally uh, 20 bucks and I'm getting app installs for $3. That's pretty good profit margins, right? But you only know that with data and you don't get data unless you're getting traffic and you're getting installs to see how much that's worth for you, right? So that's the scenario when you'd actually use app installs. That's, that's not too common. Now, video views. Some people use video views for traffic, right? Or just to get more videos. Now, let me explain. If you have an actual video that is going to have people naturally engage with it and you don't want specific traffic, but you do drop a link within your video, right? You might do video views. Or let's just say you have a music video that you want more people to see your music video. Um, now, some people might do reach or brand awareness when they're doing a video, but this is specifically going to not display your video in front of more people or not gonna give brand awareness, but this is simply going to charge you per video view. This is charging you for, for reach. This is charging you for brand awareness. This is charging you per view. So you're literally getting charged for each view. So if you want more views, you're going to do the objective of video views. Now lead generation is if you're, let's just say you're a realtor, a real estate agent, or if you have a sales funnel and on the back end you're upselling or you're trying to build an email list or you're trying to get phone contacts for your, for your, um, uh, your, your business, right? So that way you can follow up with these people. What happens is um, instead of the standard, right, where you create a sales funnel with different um, third-party softwares, Facebook allows you to create your own lead capture page or lead form with 
the internal platform. Meaning you can create a, uh, a lead page to collect leads, whether it's phone numbers, names, any type of, you can even do customization leads, right? So what happens is you're simply gonna go ahead and capture um, leads and then you can connect them to a thank you page and then after the thank you page you can send them wherever you want whether it's your website whether it's uh just you're saying thank you for putting information in my page whatever it is right and what happens is what you do is you uh use third-party softwares to connect this to either your crm or your autoresponder so an example um I just lost my train of thought as far as third-party uh, software that I use, but it'll come to my mind later. But you can literally um, connect third-party softwares for lead generation, right? Now, message. Messages is simply when you're doing like Messenger, Facebook Messenger ads, right? Um, and conversions is when Facebook is optimizing, and the only way you can do conversions is with the Facebook Pixel. And by the way, what a Facebook pixel is, is when, let's just say you have a website. Have you ever went to a website like, let's just say, I'll show you one who does it. Car gurus. Gurus. Car gurus. So car gurus, right? They have a pixel on their website. Now, as soon as I touch this website, you can't see it, but it's a small little pixel somewhere on here that literally fires and it's installed from Facebook. So whenever somebody visits their website, they're going to hit you with a Facebook retargeting ad saying, hey, you visited our website, come back. And basically conversion ads are for a specific thing that you're trying to accomplish, right? You can do for purchases, you can do for leads, you can do for clicks. Right, you can optimize for a specific conversion that you're trying to accomplish for your Facebook advertisement. Catalog sales. Create ads that automatically show items from your catalog based on your target audience. Me personally, I've never used it, but you read that, that's what it means. Um, and store visits, get more people nearby to visit your brick and mortar location. Now, for the most part, um, I personally wouldn't do store visits. I would do something um, within uh, like maybe lead generation to where you give somebody a lead magnet and then a call to action to claim it within the store. There's all um, ways that you can do this or like creating offers. And then what happens is you can track uh, the people that came in with your store by like offer codes or then bringing in a coupon or something of that nature. So that way you can actually track um, what you spent on your Facebook advertisement and then what you're earning on the back end by tracking that. I actually wouldn't do store visits, but to each his own, right? I did want to explain every single objective. So now with that being said, right, there's three steps to Facebook advertisement. Um, that is the first one, right? We need to know our objective. And like I said earlier, you want to reverse engineer, right? Reverse engineer, meaning Start from your ending goal. What is your ending goal? What are you trying to accomplish? So just to give you an example, the most commonly used, right? What I'm going to do is most people do Facebook advertisement who either has uh, websites, online stores, uh, um, sales funnels, et cetera, et cetera. The most commonly used is faith or traffic. So because most people watching this video are going to need to learn how to um, do traffic, I'm simply going to basically um do a traffic campaign right now next is ad sets right so once we ch uh, click our tra our campaign what you want to do is you want to name your campaign now what i like to do is i like to do traffic and then um campaign one because you might have multiple campaigns and then ee -E for whoever is running the campaign eric ellis right and then i like to have a date and then you always want to have whatever your campaign objective is, you want to have that within your campaign name, whether it's traffic, whether it's video views, whether it's um, lead generation, you want to have that within your name. And then I like to also put the date, which today is the 22nd. So 03, 22nd. I like to know when I started this campaign. So 
what is the ad set, right? Just to quickly overview what it is before we actually um, dive deep, right? So basically, ad set name, self-explanatory, you're just naming the ad set, but what is an ad set, right? So an ad set is simply, just to recap what we discussed earlier, is your audience, where you're gonna be placing your advertisement, and then your budget, like how much you're spending per day, and then the schedule, right? So let's look into it, right? So custom audience, you're not gonna, if you're a beginner, right? This video is beginner to expert. If you're a beginner, you're not gonna do custom audiences, but it's pretty cool just to understand what this is, as custom audiences, you could literally create new audiences and you could do stuff like adding your email list and creating a custom audience or a lookalike audience, meaning you could say, Facebook, find me a million people who are like the people on my email list or on my customer list in my CRM or whatever, whatever it may look like, right? The next is your location. You can literally work all over the world, all over the world. There is literally millions upon millions of people that you can advertise to, right? Um, so all over the world, right? And we'll look into that. Then your age. So the age, whatever your target age is for the person, your ideal customer, right? So and remember, ending goal. The ending goal is to get more money. I mean, you're, you're spending money for the most part. Or if you're doing brand awareness, maybe. But why do people do brand awareness? Because brand awareness usually results in more people knowing your name, more people are gonna buy your product. So with that being said, the objective is to make more money. So ending goal, what age group is gonna give me the most money? What um, gender, is it men, is it women? Is it a women weight loss product? Is it a men's golf product, right? You wanna ask yourself those questions. And then there's detailed targeting. Detailed targeting, you're literally going to, it, it shows you demographics, interests, or behaviors. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that we'll cover in a second that you can literally target people off of with your Facebook advertisement. We'll go over that in a second. It's kind of scary the type of data that Facebook gives you, but it's amazing for advertisement purposes. Next is basically, like we said before, placements. There's either automatic placements or edit placements. I would never recommend that you do automatic placements, and I'll explain why in a second. Um, secondly, uh, we're gonna click edit placements, and then I'm gonna go ahead and explain the different placement options that you do have and how to actually um, choose which ones are best for you. And the last but not least, budget. How much do you wanna start off with? I'll go ahead and give you an example of how much you wanna start off with. And number two is we're gonna go ahead and tell you um, not only how much to start off with, but how to actually scale, right, and do it the right way. And last but not least is schedule, depending on what, whether you wanna do a continuous campaign or a set time frame where you wanna run the campaign. Meaning if you have an advertisement for an event that the event is on the 27th of March, I have five days, so I'm gonna run the advertisement for five days, right? So let's explain. Now before we do the ad set name, I like to create the ad set. And then once we create the ad set, I'm then going to actually create the ad set name, right? So first is Custom audience, we're not gonna to touch that. That's another subject. Um, everyone in this location. So you wanna ask yourself the question, where am I currently located? And you wanna ask yourself the question, am I trying to do offline marketing or online marketing? Am I trying to do marketing for an offline business? Then you might do, um, I'm gonna show you in a second how to, how to actually do a location, right, for an offline business. And then I'm gonna show you how to just do a general um location right so let's just say uh google uh pembroke pines Publix. you might not know what a Publix is but i do right so we're gonna do let me see i just want to find the direction paracio park usa didn't mean to do that. I just want the address really quick. Okay. So I'm gonna show you guys, if you're doing an offline business, and if you're not doing an offline business, this doesn't apply to you, but it's good to know, right? What we're gonna do is for the location, we're gonna go ahead and drop the location right here, right? We're gonna add right here. Now what's pretty cool is what I did is, if you notice this Publix, let's just say I was doing advertisement for this Publix. If you're doing um, advertisement for your offline business, 
And what you can do is you can do a set radius. Do I want it to be 10 miles? Do I want it to be one mile from my store? Do I want it to be five miles from my store? Do I want it to be a 30 mile radius for my store? Right? So what you're doing is you're finding a radius and we're gonna do, we're gonna stick with two miles. And then what's gonna happen is you're literally gonna only display your advertisement to people who are 10 miles from your location, right? That's very important. Another way is if you don't wanna do it that way, you could simply drop a pin. And let's just say you're in Miami or whatever location you're at. Let's just say I drop a pin in Miami. So I'm gonna exit out of this, right? Miami, and I wanna do two miles. So I can do two miles from this specific location, right? So you could drop a pin exactly where you're located. And I, and I want to be very specific, right? So the next part that we're going to go over is going to be pertaining to you, whether you're offline or online, right? But it's crucial to know that, right? So um, is the age. We're going to go over that. But first, we're going to talk about location for online, right? So if you're doing something for online, that's a neat little trick for offline. But how about online, right? So what locations do you want to target? Now, for the most part, internet marketing, what I do is I sell digital products online. So I'm going to do the targeting specifically for the countries that are most beneficial to myself. But you might be in a whole different country actually figuring out where you want to actually, uh, where you want to get people to see your advertisement, right? So you might be in India, so you might advertise to people in India. You might be in freaking Czechoslovakia, you might uh, advertise to people out there, right? But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do... Uh, let's see, USA. <laughs> I don't know why it took me so long. So I'm going to do United Kingdom, United States, United States. I'm going to do Australia. I'm going to do Canada. Canada and New Zealand. Now, New Zealand. Now, what does that mean, guys? Basically, United Kingdom, United States, Australia, Canada, New Zealand. These are called what, are, what, what is called Tier 1 countries. Tier 1 countries, meaning they have the most money, right? And they are American-speaking. So for what I'm selling as an advertiser, and this is where, you, where your research comes into play, your own research. I've already done countless amount of research, right? These are the people who are going to be more likely to buy my product and have the funds to be able to buy my product, right? Next, so you wanna ask yourself, you wanna have an avatar, who's your, I? an avatar is your ideal customer. So going back to reverse engineering, let's start from the ending, ending point. If we look at the data of our current business or whatever I'm trying to sell or the research that I've done, on average, what is the age of the person who actually buys my product? So me personally, the best age for me is people who usually relate with my age, which is anywhere from 21 to 35. Now you might be um, promoting golf products, right? Where you might not target millennials. You might target people who are anywhere from 35 to 65 or whatever, right? And your, your advertisement, whatever you're promoting as a Facebook advertisement person might be more congruent with men or more congruent with women or both, right? Me specifically, the whole objective of Facebook advertisement is one word, or not one word, three letters, ROI, return on investment. So we're gonna press men, because that's uh, what I'm selling. Um, it tends to do better if I just target men, right? So if we look over here, just to explain the dashboard of Facebook, right? Um, up here, right, if we scroll up top, not up top, on the side, what do these things mean, right? So audience size, this is something just gonna tell you, right, the, the more narrow the, uh, the audience, the better, but it's gonna talk about how specific it is or how broad it is. The magic is being in the green, right? And it says your audience selection is fairly broad. Facebook will literally tell you if it's too broad or too specific. The magic is being in the middle, right? It'll also tell you based off of your ad spend, how much you're spending per day, and we'll get down to that in a second. Um, how much people they'll actually, how many clicks um, estimated you'll get and also uh, how many people you'll actually reach. And this is also um, dependent on how good your advertisement is. Next, um, so 
what are we gonna do next, right? Detail targeting. Now before I click and just start going, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna browse, right? So what you can do is you can look based off people's demographics, so their education, financial. I, it'll take too long for me to go through everything, but behaviors, right? Behaviors are like basically their job role, right? Soccer, travel, purchase behavior, things that they purchase, whether they purchase food or drinks or alcohol. Like it's scary the amount of data that you get access to. And the more targeted you pick people, right? Job role right? B2B, digital activities, what they do online, right? If they're gamers, if I'm a gamer, don't you think it'd be, a, if I'm selling something gaming, don't you think it'd be important for me to target console gamers, right? Um, and then you simply click the sideways one for it to drop down, and then you click the drop down for it to go back up, and then drop down for it to go back up, and then drop down for it to go back up. So that's behaviors, interests right what are they interested in business industry entertainment family and relationships so let's just say you're doing a health and wellness what i can do is simply go to fitness and wellness and then i can see all the different things right are they interested in zumba yoga um etc the list goes on hobbies and activities um are they is is this political is this pet driven am, am i selling cat socks right so we're going to click that and then we're going to go back to hobbies and activities. You can go to video vehicles if you're doing something car related, like it's kind of scary guys. So that's interest. Um, now I can literally do a whole video if I was to try to go through everything and then there's more categories and I'm not going to bore you guys. What I would highly recommend is after you watch this video, dive into the Facebook advertisement platform and literally just look at all the options that you can target people on. And Facebook literally just data mines and just gathers all this personal, personalized information off these people, which is very intrusive, but amazing for an advertiser, right? Next, what do we want to do next is, um, I'm not going to go the browse route. I'm going to go ahead and go to the, um, where were we? I'm going to go to the, uh, okay. Okay. So what you can do is depending on what your niche is, right? So let's just say um, for this specific ad that I'm going to be creating, I'm going to do it for um, digital products. Or actually, I'll do something a little bit more broad, right? I'll do something more broad that more people can relate to. So let's just say I'm selling dog socks. I'll do dog socks, right? So what I can do is I can do dogs. Right. So what happens is the easiest way, what I would recommend, is you start broad. So I'm going to do dogs. And then what you can do is you can narrow down your audience. So right now it's 14 million, way too many people. Now I can narrow down my audience. And then what I can do is go to dog. I could go to like dog lovers. I know there's dog lovers somewhere around here. 15 million. And then instead of searching and continuing to type things in, if you go to suggestions, Facebook usually does all the work for you. I love my dogs. Life with dogs. Dog lover club. Dog fans. And the list goes on. And then what I'm going to do is narrow down even further. So let's just say I was selling pug socks, pug socks on a on a uh, e-commerce website. What I can do is I can do pugs. Pugs. So 410,000 people, then I can, suggestions, we can narrow down, I love my pugs, 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 okay, cool, whatever, right? So with that being said, the list goes on, guys, what Facebook advertisement is about is just testing, tweaking, testing, testing, testing. You never know what's going to work, but it's good to know this, the foundation of knowing how to actually pick uh, an interest. And basically, the interest is going to be behaviors, likes, interests, hobbies, things that are going to be congruent with your ending purchaser. So instead of just displaying my advertisement in front of anybody, like you do on TV commercials, like you do on uh, Super Bowl commercials or whatever, right? Again, that's going back to brand awareness. That's going to commercial companies, people who have a lot of money. If you're watching this video, chances are um, there's no knock on you, right? There's just people chances are just like myself and you watching this 
You don't have millions of dollars to just dump into Facebook advertisement, right? Um, so with that being said, what you want to do is specify so you can get it in front of targeted people who are way more likely to actually buy what you're selling. So the next step is once you have your targeted audience, right, 420, me personally, what I like to do is be around 200 to 300,000 people. And the way you do that is you simply narrow it down even further and you keep on narrowing down. For time's sakes, I'm not going to, but an example, and I did not intend on doing pug socks, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it just for this example to show you that you can sell anything on Facebook as long as you know what you're doing behind this platform. So the next step is we're gonna save the audience. So let's just do the math, right? We're gonna do, what I like to do is audience one, and then I like to do um, 21 to 35, 21 to 35. And then I only chose men, but if I was really selling plug socks, I'd probably do men and women or just women maybe. So men, and then we're going to do dogs and then pugs. Pugs. So I like to put the interest. And then last but not least, the date, which is 03-22. So after I save this, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my ad set names. And I'm going to paste this. But I'm going to change this to ad set. Ad set one. Because you want to have multiple ad sets. Because the thing, guys, when, and we'll go over that a little bit later. But the thing is, is that you want to split test. We'll go into that later. Um, and then, yeah, that's fine. Ad set, perfect. So next is placements. Now you always want to edit placements and most likely when I edit my placements, your audience is going to get smaller. So again, reverse engineering is how you do Facebook advertisement. What is your the person who is um, trying to, who, the person who you're trying to sell your product to, right? Where most likely are they going to buy, right? An example is if I was doing an Instagram ad, I would only optimize my placements for mobile devices, right? So you can start, first start with devices. So mobile device or desktop only, or all devices. I'm gonna do both. But you can literally only target people on mobile, which is 80% of the Facebook users. Fun fact, right? Or desktop only, depending, let's just say, for an example, if it's a software that you can't download on a smartphone, but you have to download it on the desktop, then you might want to do desktop only, right? So that's where it comes to literally having a strategic plan before you actually step behind this platform, right? So knowing who your buyer is and where they're the where the best place to advertise. Now, just to show you guys, it's gonna show you on the side, Facebook feeds, this is what the Facebook feed looks like, right? Whether it's on a mobile device or on a um, uh, the Facebook news feed. Basically, just to show you Facebook news feed, Facebook, boom. Here's my Facebook news feed right here, right? Here's an ad right here. I'm actually gonna save this ad because this is, um, I like to study ads. I'm in digital marketing, that's what I do. So, um, and then instant articles. An instant article is literally something on the side of Facebook. Um, in-stream video, so an in-stream video is basically an interruption marketing. If you're watching a video like a funny cat video, let's just say you're watching a funny cat video and you get a, an interruption video, basically somebody selling cat socks. You might wanna buy it because you're watching um, cat videos, right? Um, right column is simply on the right column. If you look on Facebook, here's the right column, here's right column ads, right? Here's a news feed ad right here. Um, and then basically suggested videos. So after you watch a video, I'm not gonna do it, but after, if you like watch a video, if I watch this video, that's terrible. But if you watch a video, after you watch the video, um, it'll literally, give you suggested videos so that can be an ad and the next is feeds right um instagram feed 
That's self-explanatory. That's literally on your Instagram feed. And then Instagram story ads is a new feature. It's kind of like Snapchat um, to where you're interrupting people's stories and you're targeting specific people by targeting them on here. It'll target them on Instagram. So you're not just going to be putting it on anybody's story. You're going to be targeting it with people who have these specific likes and interests. On their Instagram, you're going to be interrupting their story and it'll be pretty awesome, right? So next is um, native banner um, don't really use that in stream videos is basically um, while somebody's watching a video um, it literally just has a random video come up and messenger home these are just messenger ads or spo sponsored messages to where when you're in your messenger and you're texting people right it'll literally come up in your messenger so that being said, these are the different display methods. Now, what is right for you, right? Now, you have to ask yourself the question, where, where am I going to get the most traffic, right? Now, for this example, I personally would use Instagram for this ad. But Instagram might not be beneficial. An example is if it's a video ad and it's a two-minute video, you want to ask yourself the question. Instagram only adds videos that are 60 minutes or excuse me 60 seconds long so that's obviously not going to work so let's just say i'm doing a two minute video ad for my my dog video right i'm going to take off instagram audience network not going to do it um messenger not going to do it instant articles not going to do it it's video right column not going to do it um and then we're going to do feed right so what i'll do is i'll do instagram i'm just going to do a picture but i'll do instagram and that leaves me at 410,000, but I'm not doing anything else. I'm not going to do stories. I don't want to do stories. I just want to do Instagram feeds. So that being said, my audience is 410,000. What this means is that it will be displayed on the feeds of people who I target, like my targeted buyer for whatever I'm selling. It will be displayed on their um, Facebook, and it will be displayed on their Instagram, right? So that being said, I, f I found my targeted buyer, right? I targeted the right person. The next step is once you target them, you want to go ahead and um, figure out where you're going to place your ads. And the last but not least, right, we want to do our daily budget and our scheduling. So daily budget, I would highly recommend always starting at the lowest point because what we're going to go over later is split testing. And what you want to do is simply start at $5 a day and you want to test multiple audiences. When you test multiple audiences, you'll notice some audiences are performing better than others. And then once you find a winning ad for whatever you're promoting, you'll cut off the loser ads that aren't profitable and then you'll invest however much you can afford per day, whether it's 20, whether it's 30, whether it's 50, whether it's 1,000, there's people who spend $1,000 a day on Facebook. You invest that money into your actual advertisement campaigns. Um, but first, start off small. So $5, we'll start with $5. So it's showing a dollar a day is the minimum. I'll start with at least five, because you want to get action, right? Next is, you have two options. Run my ad continuously, or you can set a start and end date. So an example is, let's just say you're running an event ad. You're promoting an event, you have a video ad. Within your text, you're talking about them going to this specific venue at this specific time, right? And you have some sort of sense of urgency saying, you, you can only get this offer at this date, right? You might run the ad till the 29th, right, for a week. But if you're running a campaign for like maybe selling digital products or maybe like for this it's a Example, we're going to be selling pug socks um, for my e-commerce store. Obviously, I don't have an e-commerce store, but I'm going to show you guys the power behind Facebook advertising and how to actually use this thing from beginner to expert, right? Um, what we're going to do is we're going to do continuously. So just to recap really quick, because I'm not going to come back to this, is we want to start, before we actually name this, we want to find our audience. You're going to target by age, gender, demographics, where they're located, depending whether you're offline or online, um, and uh, their likes and their interests. Then you're going to find placements. Where's the best place to place my advertisement on Facebook? And the last but not least is the actual um, 
budget, and your schedule, right? So that being said, on to the next step. And the campaign objective, what are we trying to do? We already explained that. Traffic, video views, brand awareness, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. Now here's where it gets uh, exciting. We're going to go ahead and create our first Facebook ad. Now, what type of Facebook ads can you have, right? Basically, first and foremost, this is where you connect your Facebook fan page. Now, first, what we're going to do is, yes, we're going to keep traffic, but I'm going to put add one because, remember, we're going to have multiple ads. We're going to do add one, and then we're going to do traffic. And then you might do, I'll put pug socks. I'll put my offer and then 03, 03, 22. So we're gonna connect now, obviously guys, what's very important is making sure your fan page is congruent with whatever you're selling. So I'm not gonna do my business personal page for, um, for pug socks, right? But for this example, right, assume this is a, I love pugs page, right? Fan page. So what we're gonna do is carousel, right? We're not gonna do carousel, we're gonna pick the different options, right? So do you want to do a carousel ad? A carousel ad is simply when there's multiple images and you can swipe from left to right. A single image, self-explanatory. So literally one ad that comes across. If we go back to my Facebook, um, here's a single image ad. That's what a single image ad looks like, right? And if you notice, Frank Kurt. He's a, a eight-figure eight um, digital marketer. He has um, a, a newsfeed ad, and he also has an ad on his, um, I just lost my train of thought, the side, right? Um, so that goes back to placements, right? Um, and the next is single video, right? Are you trying to do a video ad, right? Next is slideshow. Do you want to have a slideshow of pictures? And the last is a collection of pictures, right? So depending on your actual objective and your audience and what you're trying to accomplish will depend on what type of ad you're gonna do. Meaning obviously if I'm doing video views, I'm going to have a single video. Now whether you're doing traffic or not, you might do carousel, you might do single image, you might do video views. Let's just say you're doing a Facebook retargeting ad. What I've seen is somebody have multiple pictures of testimonials, right? Or if you have a restaurant, you can have multiple dishes, right? And then call to actions to claim whatever your offer is. Last but not least is the actual ad. So let's get to the nitty gritty. Now, first and foremost, let's go ahead and find um, Google or actually I'm going to I'm going to do stock images for now. Change image. We're going to do So what you can do? Page images. Upload image. All right. Remove. Select image. Not sure why it's not letting me but basically there's a way where you can literally just select a stock image hold on image oh no I don't want that so that's a carousel ad I don't want that remove and remove Oh, that's why, because I'm clicking carousel. So we're going to do single image ad. I was wondering why. I apologize for that. Um, see, even with me spending hours behind this damn platform, I kind of have brain farts sometimes. So what we're going to do is we're going to do single image ads. And then what I'm going to do, um, you, you can have your own uh, adverts created. I would use something like canva.com. But free stock images. I was wondering why that wasn't coming up. So let's see if we have any pug socks. Oh, that's amazing. Um, so these have shutter stock. Um, I would find one online. Let's just Google really quick. Pug socks. 
Oh, that's awesome. That's a good one. Save image as pug socks. Go back to Facebook Ads Manager. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload my own image. So we're going to upload image, desktop, pug socks, boom. So first we have an image now. We have pug socks, right? Now would I ever advertise pug socks? No. But I just want to show you guys you literally can sell anything on this platform. All I simply did was I found a campaign objective, which is traffic. And then what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to act as if my website's name is ilovepugs.com. Let's just see. Pugsocks.com. Wow, does somebody not really have that website domain? So we're going to um, use that image. And then I love pugs. Dot com. So we're gonna act as if I love pugs.com is the website that I'm using. Now I don't know why it's showing like that, but oh that's why. Headline. So basically what is the headline? The headline shows up right here. So we're gonna put um you need these socks. Do you love pugs? If so, you need these. Let me see. Boom. Okay, usually it changes into a heart, but whatever. So first the headline is down here. What is the ad text, right? The ad text is the promotional message that, that you're going to have at the top of your actual advertisement. So depending on what your ending goal is will depend on the message that you're actually going to deliver. So an example, if I'm trying to get people to drive traffic to my website or my e-commerce website for Pug socks. Um, first, I might catch the attention. Pug attention. Pug lovers. Or actually, I'll I'll start off like this. Ten percent discount on first time customers Giving giving ten percent discount on the first time to first time customers. We'll explain that in a second. So attention pug lovers, do you love pugs? If so, you need these socks to show our appreciation to the pug lovers community we are giving 10% discount on all first time customers for the next 
seven days. Great feet. Shop now. What's in to claim your discount? All right, so, and then description. So text, right, the text, and then I'm, what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break down what, what actually happened. If you're new to advertisement, I'll break down why it's important, right? Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and, by the way, so let's look at this really quick. So there's the text, there's the headline, there's the call to action, multiple languages, nope. Hide advanced options, nope. Display link, um, news feed description, and then there's pixels and stuff like that, right? So, with that being said, um, description. We are giving a 10% discount to show our appreciation to all new customers. So let's explain what we just wrote and then display link. I love pugs. So let's break this down, guys. So basically, first and foremost, um, what is the headline? Here's the headline. What is the um, call to action button? Here's the call to action button. What is the um, display link? Here's the display link down here. What is the newsfeed link description? Um, it'll be shown down below. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna change that to shop now. Shop now. Now let's explain this actual ad, right? So what I wrote is um, basically if, if uh, you go back to what we talked about, what we did is we targeted people who like dogs and more specifically people who have common interests and likes with pugs, right? Specifically pugs. So if you love pugs or if you're interacting with pugs on your actual Facebook and this stumbles across your uh, page, don't be surprised because people are targeting you because of your likes and your interests. However, on the flip side, if you're the actual advertiser, you can literally get this in front of people who are more likely to actually buy what you're selling. So guys, this is supposed to be for a broad idea to where Obviously, you're most likely not selling pug socks. You can sell anything or you can target anybody. If it's a restaurant, you can talk, target food lovers or foodies. If it's fitness, you can tar target people who like fitness, uh, likes and interests pertaining to fitness, etc., etc. The list goes on, but I'm not going to bore you guys about that, right? So you want to start with capturing people's attention when it comes to your actual first initial message. One way to capture people's attention is simply by calling out the specific person. Who's, who you're actually trying to reach, so attention pug lovers. Now, if you're not a pug lover and you see that, you're gonna keep on scrolling. If you're a pug lover and you see that, you're gonna keep on reading. Simple, right? Meaning if I'm trying to catch the attention of business owners, I'm gonna say attention business owners. If I'm gonna try to catch the attention of um, internet entrepreneurs, I'm gonna say attention internet entrepreneurs and so on and so on, right? I'm calling out my audience, right? I'm capturing their attention immediately. Second way to hook them is by asking a question. Do you love pugs? If I love pugs, most likely I'm gonna, first of all, you're gonna, subconsciously, you're gonna answer that question. Naturally, you if somebody asks you a question, you're gonna go ahead and answer it, whether you verbalize it or whether it's just within your head. Next, I'm transitioning to directly going to my offer. If so, you need these socks. To show our appreciation to the pug lovers community, we are giving 10% discount on all first time customers for the next seven days. Now what I'm doing is I'm giving up front value. When it comes to Facebook guys, understand that people aren't on Facebook to, um, people aren't on Facebook to buy stuff. They're on, they would go to Amazon if they were trying to buy something, right? People are on Facebook simply to um, like connect with people, right? So at the end of the day, if you're, if you're interrupting somebody's connection or connecting time, you're gonna be giving up from value away is by giving discounts or giving stuff away for free or et cetera, et cetera. 
to recapture people's attention and keep them engaged by giving them upfront value. And then what I do is I have a sense of urgency, right? You always want to have some sort of scarcity. So whatever you're advertising, put a time frame on it or put a limited amount on it so that way it engages people to actually take action on whatever you're selling. And shop now, you're simply telling them to click. You, you have to tell people exactly which action you want them to take. I want them to click the shop now button so that way they can visit my website. So what are they going to do? Click the shop now button. So with that being said, from start to finish, that's how you create a Facebook ad. But as stated before, we're going to do it from start to finish. So after we actually create our first ad, what is the next step? Right? That's what we're going to answer. So just to recap really quick, here's the text. Here's the ad image. And this is a single image. Here's the um, display link. Here's the headline. Here's the call to action button. The link, uh, the link description, or not the link description, the description will be below here, right? Here's what your ad's gonna look like on mobile. Here's what your ad's gonna look like on desktop, right? Pretty nice. And then you know who it's gonna be displayed in front of. It's gonna be displayed in front of 30, uh, excuse me, 21 to 35 year old men who are um, interested in pugs and pug lovers and dogs and all that stuff and who live in these American, or not American countries, but in these first world countries. And my campaign objective is traffic, so I'm gonna be, Facebook's gonna optimize me to get clicks. But instead of them just doing their part and optimizing just to get clicks, because that's all they're gonna do, it's my job to put the actual targeting and display it in the right places so that way when they optimize it for clicks, I'm getting quality clicks. Guys, all traffic is not created equal. Just because you're getting clicks doesn't mean it's good clicks, right? So with that being said, what is the next step? The next step is actually launching the ad. So after you got that, the next thing would be pressing confirm. Now I'm not gonna go ahead and press confirm. Why? Because obviously I'm not doing uh, pug socks. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step behind the actual um, ads manager, leave this page. I'm gonna show you a current campaign that we have up and running that I just um, put up and running, right? So. Let's go to bear with me. Business.facebook.com. And then we're going to go to Ads Manager. There we go. So here's two different. So, guys, as stated before, right? Two different campaigns. One is a video views campaign, right? So guys, just as soon as you um, put up your, by the way, just kind of like break down everything that we're looking at here, right? So as soon as you put up your first ad, you're not gonna have this much stuff. You're gonna have your first campaign, right? So your first campaign is gonna look something like this, whatever your campaign's name was. Then what's gonna happen is, right? If you look at this, right, it's gonna have, at the top, it's gonna have account overview. Right, this is just an overview of your actual account. So frequency, frequency simply means um, like how, how it's performing. Like the higher your frequency, the better your advertisement is actually performing. Uh, basically unique clicks. This is how much you're actually um, clicking. This is just one of my Facebook ads accounts. This is my uh, account that, that I just started because one of my other accounts got shut down. But 1,081 clicks, so it shows how many clicks, it shows how many people you've reached, 288,000. It shows your, your total amount spent, right? And then it'll give you whatever your objectives were, it'll show you exactly what you received, right? Um, so typical information, you don't want to confuse yourself by looking at all this stuff. I'll, in a second, show you guys what's important to actually understand, right? So next is campaigns. Now... There's campaigns, ad sets, and your ad campaigns. What you can do is track these numbers. So once you have your ads, right, there's a lot of videos online that teach you about your ads, but they don't teach you what to do after. That's why you are a very smart individual by clicking this video um, to actually learn the skill set, right? So here we go. Campaigns. If we look into campaigns, right, um, your campaign name, depending on what you named it, you'll literally be able to look at it and then you'll be able to edit it. So this is basically looking into what we um, did earlier. You're not going to have too much because the campaign is literally just going to have um, an objective, right? Which is traffic. Simple. And then what you can do is you can set a spending limit, but you're not going to do that if you're doing continuous advertisement. 
Next is um, ads. So one thing is when you look at campaigns, there's also an overview right here. There's things called co uh, columns breakdown export. What you want to do is you want to do you want to create your own custom um, customized columns. And basically, when you press customize columns, you can literally uh, do what you want to actually see. So you can see what the cost per clicks are. So whatever is important to you, right? Meaning cost per clicks are important, cost per result, um, CPM, click-through rate. What that means is the amount of people who actually uh, see your ad and actually click it, um, the percentage, right? Uh, video views, all this stuff, guys. I'm not going to go through this, but what this simply is, is things that you want to be displayed. Now, just to show you one that's pre created, it's kind of show you the power of this, right? Video ads. So these are video ads right here. So what's important? These are the things that I looked at, right? So if you look here, amount spent 20 cents so far, 24 cents. So that's what's important to look at, right? Um, now, cost per result, if you look here, I believe this is video views. It looks like um, I'm getting link, link clicks at 10 cents right now. And over here, um, 10 or excuse me, 2 cents per video view because they're two different campaigns. So the results are going to be different because this one is a video view ad, right? The, the results are going to be different. I'm paying per video view. This one, this campaign is a uh, traffic ad, but I'm running a video. This one's 10 cents per result. Now, next is button clicks, right? This is basically button clicks, how much um, button clicks you have, right? Three second video views, 415, video average watch time. Um, and basically what you do is you set the, the columns. So click through rate 11%. What that means is out of 10 people, excuse me, out of 100 people of my ad being displayed on their actual page, that means literally 11% um, are actually clicking on the ad. That's what that means. Next is website leads, right? The only way you can track website leads and cost per website lead is with the pixel. And the last but not least is cost per website purchase. That's with the Facebook pixel as well which um, I'm not going to show you guys how to uh, uh, set it up, but what you can do is if you can go to uh, tutorials on how to uh, set up your pixel, you can go to all tools, right? Click this drop down, all tools, and you can go to pixels, and it's a simple setup, uh, which is very crucial when it comes to Facebook advertising. So once you look behind this platform, you want to track these steps, right? But to go a little bit more into detail, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dive deeper into this campaign right here, which is the actual video traffic. So the way that you do that, by the way, if you click this drop down at the top, it's going to select everything. If you collect, click it, click it again, it's going to deselect everything. Now, I don't want to select everything. I just want to look at this specific campaign. Now, what's going to happen is within this one campaign, it's going to display all my different ad sets, right? So in this one campaign, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different ad sets, right? Seven different ad sets. Now, if you look here, if I press, so what happens is within your ad sets, there's multiple ads, right? So for this one ad set, I have two different ads, right? Does that make sense? So there's campaigns, like I stated, you're gonna you're gonna start by creating a campaign, and then what you want to do is within that within your first marketing campaign, you want to start with about three to five different ad sets. So why do you want to touch if you notice I have two different campaigns going up right two different campaigns and at this current moment I just put the campaign up three or excuse me four different ad sets now what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to test which one's working the best right now this one's converting the best I'm literally getting unique cost per clicks at 10 cents that's ridiculous and also, uh, you want to basically test these things so that way you can analyze this data and you can optimize and improve from there, right? So if we look back here, 
right? Campaigns. I clicked the two campaigns. Here we have ad sets. Now, if I want to look at all the ad sets and all the ads, I simply click right here. And then for those two different campaigns, I have all these freaking ads. But what I want to do is I don't want to do all these campaigns or all these ad sets. I just want to do the four current um, ad, ad sets that I have up right now. So the next step is simply going and looking at the actual ads. So right here, you can actually look at your ads and which, one are, which ones are performing. So if you look here, um, I have the four ads. Two of them are um, traffic and two of them are video views, right? So video views, video views, here's one's traffic, traffic. And then you simply just track your data, guys. Um, whatever data is important to you, depending on what your ending objective is. Now, guys, obviously, for your custom columns, if you're not doing a video ad, you're not going to have video views at 95%, video average watch time, three-second video views. You're not going to have all that extra stuff. You're simply going to have the specific data, which is important for you to actually understand what's important for your advertising campaign. So, with that being said, um, what is this? Where does this leave us, right? Basically, from start to finish, just to recap. We started with going on our regular Facebook page, clicking right here, creating ad. Right, we created a page first, we created an ad. Once we create um, an ad, it's gonna ask us for our campaign, right? Once we pick a campaign, we're gonna go through, once we pick the campaign, right, we created our first campaign, for example, edit, which is traffic, we chose traffic, then after we chose our campaign, we created our first ad set. Eventually you'll do multiple, but we'll start with one. And then what you do is you edit, not edit, but you basically found your audience and then your daily budget and then the amount of people, right? And we're displaying it, news feeds, right? All mobiles, link clicks is what I'm optimizing for. And then, once we finally did our ad set, then we created our first ad, right? Which if you look here, we have the actual ad, which is a video ad. We have the, so we, we go back into detail. Uh-oh. So, and guys, I practice what I preach. I have, I have an ad running right now. Like this isn't me just, throwing fluff like a lot of these marketers who create Facebook ads and they're really not in the trenches with you guys, right? I'm showing you guys an ad that's running that I just started today. So um, basically, here's the website URL that I'm driving them to. Um, this is the actual link that you're driving them to. Here's the ad text. Here's the text that shows up here. Here's the display link. Obviously, the display link, right, ericellisjr.com, is different than this right here, the website URL. And with that being said, guys, so, um, yeah, your ad's up. Once your ad's up, you simply go to, go back to Ads Manager, and then you're going to have all your campaigns here. And then what you're going to do is simply just look at the data. Now, if the data looks kind of funky, what you can simply do is go to Custom Columns, um, set as default, or you can um, uh, customize columns. It'll most likely have... If you're just starting, it'll most likely have preset uh, columns. But if you want to create your own custom column for a specific ads that you want to track, then what you're going to do is you're simply going to do that by um, you're simply going to do that by uh, creating a custom column, and then you can go ahead and track your data. And once you track your data, guys, the next step is just tracking everything else, right? So if you're if you don't have Facebook Pixel. Right. An example is let's just say amount spent is a hundred dollars, and I'm doing running an offline business. And for my offline business, I acquire ten customers, which is worth fifty dollars per customer. I made five hundred dollars off of my hundred dollars ad spend. That means once I scale and I start spending a thousand dollars, that I should get five thousand dollars in revenue, and so on and so on. If I'm doing online marketing, if I'm doing e-commerce, if I'm spending a a uh, hundred dollars and I'm getting a thousand dollars in sales 
right? Because there's a whole bunch of other things that you have to factor in with e-commerce. Then that's a thousand dollars in revenue generated from a hundred dollars ad spend, right? So what you do is you track your data so that way you know if the campaign is profitable or not. So that being said, guys, that's like very extremely freaking detailed. Um, that now I know it says beginner to expert. Um, you're the, the only way you guys can become an expert is not just by watching this video, but by applying it. And you're, uh, I, I hate to break it to you guys, but you will lose money. I lose money all the time. But understand this, it only takes one successful ad to make up for all the advertising, advertisement testing that you were doing before. One successful ad. One successful ad, depending on what you're selling and what type of um, ad spend that you have, can make you six figures, seven figures. It only takes one successful ad. So keep that in mind, guys. Persevere, keep on testing, and keep on crushing it in your freaking online business or just in business period. So that being said, just to recap, that's, or not just to recap, but that's how you do Facebook ads uh, from start to finish and how to become a beginner to an expert with Facebook ads. Now, here's my challenge to you. Um, if you wanna learn about digital marketing, right, to where I actually use Facebook ads to generate thousands of dollars online. I actually do have a gift for you. I have a free ebook that'll literally, from start to finish, um, teach you guys how to generate a passive income online fast. When I mean fast, I mean fast. Um, simply, it gives you the shortcuts, right? Just how I gave you this content to where if you try to learn Facebook ads on your, your own, right? Now after watching this video, you have the shortcuts to Facebook advertisement. This book is gonna be literally um, the cheat sheet for you getting results um, in digital business online, right? You could look at the link in the description or you can go ahead and go to affiliatesplaybook.com, cop that freaking ebook. Promise you to be the best read you've made thus far. And if you wanna learn about affiliate marketing, that's what I actually use Facebook advertisement for to actually generate income. Um, what you wanna do is go to jumpstartaffiliate.com. Um, obviously, I know what the hell I'm talking about. Um, I'm here to help people. I'm all about legacy and I want to get compensated doing so. So yes, it does cost, but it'd be the best investment that you guys have made this far. Jumpstartaffiliate.com or go to the link in the description. You'll be able to get access to the ebook and the course. Uh, whether you want a free, if you want something free, get access to the ebook. If you want to invest into your future, invest into that course. Both are great, great investment of your finances and your time. I appreciate you one more time for actually tuning into this video. And Eric Ellis Jr. Checking out.